So after many, many, many hours and an extremely long night last night, we're ready to fully give you guys the definitive best weapon tier list guide for the long night. You can even see some bagginess going on here as we talk about this. So if you did like this video, there's a lot of work going into this video, like all of the videos, you want to see more stuff, you know what to do here on the YouTube section, like and also comment and subscribe for sure here. Now let's get into it with you guys with the method behind what's going on here. Builds, they're all pretty much the same, no matter how you, how you math it out. The best builds are always the same exact setup artifact wise for Eula when it comes to numbers and damages. So the set that's always the best is the four piece pale flame set. Don't panic though. It's only marginally better than having two piece bloodstain and two piece pale flame. So if you have some really nice, well rolled bloodstain stuff and you don't really have perfect four piece for pale flame yet, go ahead and do that. All you're missing out on is that 18% attack, but the pale flame here, 50% damage bonus, and it's not that hard to get two stacks. Eula's easy enough four second press cooldown there. On top of that, all of the same substats and main stats were used for these builds because it was the best, no matter what weapon you were using when it comes down to Eula. So let's talk about that real quick. The amount of main stats and subsets you're looking for here, obviously your goblet is gonna be physical damage. She does do a tiny bit of crowd damage, but the vast majority of her damage is physical. She's got her normal attacks. She's got the big sword from her elemental burst. She's got the ascension that summons a mini sword when you use her hold on her elemental skill so physical damage goblet is what you're looking for there sand sears and pack percent sands and then crit rate was the best on average there although if you had a very high well rolled crit damage circlet with some substat for crit rate all the way through that one's very nice as well but mathematically a uh, crit rate main with a large majority of crit damage substats is what we're using here so with the subsets we're using here we're using some very nice well rolled five star artifacts in the calculations that we'll be showing you as well as the graphs and all that nice stuff when it comes down in here. So what are we looking for here? So we had like 80% crit damage and substats, 30% crit rate and substats, and around 30% attack percent in substats for you guys there. Now I do have a build in Genshin that's very similar to that. It doesn't have as much crit and as much crit damage, but it does have over the attack percent that I was using in the calculator. So that's awesome there as well ready to pull for Eula when she comes out. If you guys want to see that stuff as well, we'll be doing that on the channel. I think we'll be streaming to YouTube this time for that. So if you want to check that stuff out, that's where we're going to be there. So before we get into all of the weapons, there's a couple weapons I want to talk about here. And these ones are going to be the energy recharge weapons, guys. So the Skyward Pride, right? You have uh, that weapon. You also have stuff like the Favonius weapon and the Sacrificial Greatsword. Those weapons, it's very hard to quantify how much extra damage you're going to be getting from these energy recharge weapons in the grand scheme of things when you're kind of templating it like this, right? Her cooldown is a 20 second cooldown on the elemental burst, but it also does cost 80 energy, but you have a very, very lengthy time, 20 seconds to get 80 energy back. So it's going to be dependent on how many enemies are you fighting. If you're fighting a bunch of low level enemies, they're going to be dropping orbs from being defeated. They're going to be dropping particles and orbs from getting damaged through certain thresholds so this is going to be a very sort of a uh, differentiated based on what how many enemies you're fighting and how much hp they have in the grand scheme of things so it's very hard you could be looking you know five to ten percent more uptime on your elements of burst that's going to give you like, maybe like you know five percent more damage when it all is, is said and done in maybe like a two minute fight so very hard to really quantify like i said how much damage you gain from energy recharge but it's not an insane amount in most cases. So I wanted to talk about those first and foremost. Now let's talk about some of the actual stuff and we'll break it down and why these weapons are ranked this way, what holds them back, why they're good, why they are bad here. So you're gonna see this nice little chart here as we bring it up here. This is the total damage done in this scenario. Now this is um, a combination of normal attacks uh, as well as the elemental burst damage and the elemental skill hold damage there. So we have a little bit of cryo damage coming through with the elemental burst the initial activation is cryo and you form the sword and that's physical same thing with the elemental skill here the activation and stuff that's cryo but the ascension will drop a mini sword which is physical so some weapons are going to get a little bit of bonus uh, because they have you know higher attack percent and some weapons are going to have a little bit of a bonus because they have physical damage on the normal attacks damage and the uh, the non cryo damage there the longer you're in a fight the more attacks you get off with your normal attack string you might see some slight 
changes based on what you see here with this raw damage math because if you're in a fight and you're messing around and you get like three elemental skills off but you attack 25 times with your normal attacks uh, you're gonna have a very slight difference and the actual damage you're getting between these weapons but all things said and done it's gonna be very close and very accurate because this is raw damage attested for here now the worst weapon in the game uh, is the favonius weapon it has the worst base attack of all four star claymores period it's got the lowest one and on top of that it has that energy recharge and like we just covered not really changing how much crazy damage you do there it also has that crits give you some energy back but you're still held back by that 20 second cooldown on the elemental burst and the elemental burst does do a pretty substantial amount of damage here especially if you're constellation six which we're not even talking about here we're doing a constellation one constellation zero build here for you i should say uh, where you're getting like 10 to 15 stacks on your elemental to burst for that sword there so that is by far the worst weapon period in genshin impact for this character now you also have something like the bell sacrificial uh rank one or rank five right those weapons don't really change too much there the bell is going to give you that damage while they're shielded but her shield is going to be based off of her own hp from the bell proc she's not being built for hp percent so the enemy's going to shred right through that but even if you had a high refinement rank bell it is still going to be one of the worst weapons that you can use there range slasher as well even if you had 100 percent uptime on doing bonus damage to targets that are you know uh high road or uh hit with electro which you might be able to do with Fischl at C6, but even then, it's just not good. The EM Shatter hasn't gotten changed yet. Not really all that crazy stuff there as well. Royal Greatsword here, I had a lot of questions. Royal Greatsword, uh, especially if you already have well-rolled artifacts, the higher crit you already have in your build, the worse the Royal Weapons give you. And this is gonna give you when you have like, you know, 50, 60% crit rate on average, even at refinement rank five, you're looking at maybe on average like three to maybe five percent with really bad rng because you're not critting extra crit rate and the long-term effects of a battle there so definitely 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 bottom tier white blind refinement rank one terrible stuff bell five for the same reason terrible and that's what the proc up still then you have lithic blade r1 which is kind of in there just hanging out and this is with two leeway members remember you have to have leeway people to get that extra attack percent and that crit rate percent so that's going to be there barely 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 meeting up on some of these other r5 weapons so you have the range slasher r5 still not that good and then you have the what we were talking about earlier got a lot of questions about this one in the previous video for four star weapons the black cliff weapon now why is the black cliff down here so low well this is because you can see there's 39 different graphs here 39 different weapons that we're testing out and there's not 39 different claymores but some of them have time-based procs or harder to activate procs weapons that are just like hit an enemy get a proc that's not that hard to do so you don't need to differentiate them uh before the first three attacks or whatever when you're looking at the grand scheme of things here and trying to get right to the point of how a weapon will serve you in general but some weapons like the black cliff will have to be defeated you know enemies to get those stacks up so if you have an r1 and an r5 but you're not getting any sacks maybe you're fighting one big uh enemy in the abyss right you're fighting the heralds and you can't actually beat anything the entire time you're not getting stacks so you're not getting the big effect from that black cliff but whether it's r5 or r1 that crit damage it does make it significantly better than all the other weapons we've talked about so far but it will get better all right now there's a sky rider great sword the sky rider claymore refinement rank one now this is a three star weapon this does actually beat out just a straight up non-proc version of the black cliff and this is r1 of that weapon so it's actually kind of one of eula's secret sauce weapons it has a bunch of physical damage on it and the proc is not that hard to activate it's just do damage to things you get up to if you're at r5 on this 10 percent per stack gets up to four stacks for 40 percent extra attack there it's got very low base attack but it actually does a significant amount of increased damage for you because 40 percent attack plus 48 and some change worth of physical damage there it's very strong and you want to fast forward you can see the sky raider r5 is actually just above the midway point of all of the weapons that you can use in genshin impact for this character so very nice stuff there uh prototype archaic right below the white blind r5 white blind we talked about that one before if you have an r5 uh, it is a very defensive weapon but at r5 it gives you a very significant increase to attack 48 percent attack 48 percent defense as well so if you're trying to run a more defensive oriented team want your shields to last forever with your diona or your zongli or perhaps your noel 
you have an r5 white blind but you have noelle on your team so she's probably wearing that uh so scratch noelle but diona or zhang Li, that's another option for you there for a lower damage base four star weapon then you have prototype archaic refinement rank five which is actually right next to the refinement rank one skyward pride now this is another weapon that has a proc that is not up all the time so if you're just swinging around with your skyward pride you haven't used your elemental burst then this weapon's actually pretty bad here especially at refinement rank one it's got decent base attack it's got some energy recharge but fear not skyward pride fans it can get very very much so better with refinement ranks or while its effect is actually activated right you use your elemental burst you can be doing extra damage there so stay tuned for that one there you want the snow tombed r1 barely beaten out by the lithic blade r5 which is then beaten out by the snow tombed r5 okay so that little tiny procs can help that one out there but the longer the battle goes on those procs are time-based a little bit rng and the lithic blade is right on top of that one so they're kind of back and forth depending on how long you're in an encounter there then you have the skyward pride r5 which gets a little bit of bonus damage increase right 16 percent all your stuff this is still without activating your elemental burst and getting those extra attacks off during this period of time so we're going to be talking about that more and more and more as we get into higher refinement rank weapons and higher rarity weapons because these become more accessible or more common i should say with these higher refinement rank weapons we also have like the skyward pride in the broken pines and wolf gravestone so keep all that stuff in mind there now the skyward pride refinement rank one as you can see this first big jump here this is actually because the refinement rank one with the proc up does significant damage so during that burst window you're looking for a burst you with the skyward pride it's pretty good it's actually pretty darn strong when it comes to dishing out damage right away but that one is also right on top of the black cliff they're neck and neck they're really they're literally within less than one percent dps of each other and this is refinement rank one black cliff this is giving you 36 percent attack 55 percent crit damage very strong weapon here keeping up at refinement rank one with a refinement rank one five star weapon so you can see the difference in damage of the black cliff between when you are able to take out enemies or you're not able to take out enemies that's why i didn't really have it in the other video the four star weapon video because it's a very volatile weapon i put that pin comment in there because it's either going to be not that good or it's going to be really good because this is a refinement rank one version of that weapon it's also still underneath the serpent spy and refinement rank one because that weapon at refinement rank one has almost its full potential as a weapon already unlocked that the full crit rate it's got 30 out of the 50 percent total damage bonus there so if you're good at dodging or if you have some big shields to take away the drawback of serpent spine stacks falling off it's an incredibly powerful weapon for you so much so that it is right neck and neck with an r1 wolf's gravestone but keep this in mind this is wolf's gravestone in general not when you have an enemy under 30 percent hp so if you've already procced the wolf's gravestone and it's on cooldown or you are fighting one big enemy until the enemy gets to 30 percent hp or below until you hit something wolf's gravestone's full potential is not unleashed and when it's not inside that big burst potential window it's right on there with serpent spine that's how strong serpent spine is for eula as a four star weapon right next to wolf's gravestone is broken pines r1 which is very similar you need to get those stacks up and if either those stacks run cooldown for the attack percent and extra attack percent buff up you can't have that buff yet when that buff is unavailable it as well does way less damage than before now on top of that then you have the scoured pride r1 if you're hitting two enemies with the uh the nice wind blades then it does a significant amount more damage this is really where this weapon shines is in aoe situations right you pop your elemental burst your swords forming you're throwing your your, your attacks around and you're proccing your sword stacks to grow your elemental burst there just in general but also on top of that you're hitting multiple enemies with your skyward pride vacuum blades and then if you're hitting two enemies per vacuum blade it starts to do a lot more damage in general and those are still all refinement rank one weapons because refinement rank five is going to swap it up a bit because some weapons gain a lot more damage than other ones at refinement rank five now r1 the unforged the unforged is going to be one of the uh, most stable five star weapons if you just want a good strong weapon that's always going to do good average damage for you and give yourself a little bit of tankiness too from the shield strength if that's something you care about the unforged is definitely right there this possibly one of my personal favorites just because how how good it is all of the time we'll see that 
in the future. Now you can see right here why Unforged R1 is so strong. R5 Wolf's Gravestone is literally the same weapon. They do the same exact damage on, on, as an Unforged R1 if you have the shield up than a Wolf's Gravestone R5 does without that big under 30% HP proc. Now, once you get the 30% HP proc, you'll see it. Obviously, you can see it right now. Wolf's Gravestone is the highest damage weapon you can have in the game. But without that proc, it falls down substantially because you're not getting that giant extra attack percent, right? That 80% attack for your whole party thing going on there. But inside that burst window, nothing matches the Gravestone. Outside of it, though, it's right there with an R1 five star weapon. Black Clip R5 here, if you can see it, with stacks up is actually a tiny bit better, tiny bit better with max stacks than these other weapons. So if you're fighting a bunch of lower HP enemies, a bunch of hilly trolls in the abyss, or little slimes and stuff, that weapon is going to shine. But remember, if you're not, you're fighting big dudes, your R5 Black Cliff is gonna go from, you know, just sub 800K raw damage in this scenario, all the way down to 600K, one of the worst weapons in the game. So that's how volatile that weapon is when it comes to a weapon like that in Genshin. Now, Skyward Pride here at R5 with hitting one thing with the proc during that burst window, it's pretty significant. It's right up there with all these other weapons we've been talking about, right? Wolf's Gravestone, Black Cliff, very strong with stacks. Skyward Pride during that burst window is very good. But remember, as soon as you leave that burst window, you're falling back down in average to these other weapons. So how powerful these weapons are gonna be with these burst windows depends on how long it's taking you to beat something. Does it take you two minutes to beat an abyss floor? Does it take you 30 seconds to beat an abyss floor? Does it take you a minute to beat an abyss floor? All of these different time changes affect how strong these weapons are in general. But with these different layouts here that I'm showing you, R5 during a proc window, R5 during not a proc window, you can just literally take the average, right? And figure out how that works best for you guys here. Now the Broken Pines R5 here without the proc, very strong weapon beaten out by the R5 a Serpent Spine. That's how strong Serpent Spine is for her. Now this is with max stacks, obviously. So you wanna build around that. Zhongli shield, Diona shield, some big shield like that, or just be exceptionally good at the game and not take any damage. That's also a thing you can do, but it is one of the top weapons of the game. I think it's in seventh place here. Very, very, very strong. And it's also not situational at all. There's no burst window for this Serpent Spine weapon. The only situational thing is don't get hit. So put a shield on, good to go. All right, you have the Broken Pines R1 during the proc. So this is also very strong, followed right up by Wolf's Gravestone R1 during that proc window. So the proc window for Broken Pines R1, that's when you get the four stacks, not that hard to do, but it does have a pretty lengthy cooldown on it. And at R1, you're gonna get a pretty significant attack bonus, right? 16% or something like that. And then 12% attack speed. I did add an extra attack there because we were doing 10 attacks. Uh, so at, you know, 12% attack speed, you're gonna get just over one extra attack. So we did a uh, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. So we got an extra attack there that bumped it up and helped you out there. Obviously, if you're not good at uptime, if you're dodging too much during that window, this weapon's gonna be worse than that for you. It all comes down to just so many different circumstances and how you play Genshin. But if you're playing it perfectly, this is kind of what it's gonna be looking like for you there. And Wolf's Gravestone still edges that up. It gets that nice big attack bonus for your whole party. We're just focusing in on Eula here but get that Wolf's Gravestone attack bonus, right? Drop your elemental burst, boom, big damage there. Now the Unforged R5 here, you can see just how solid this weapon is. This is why it's one of my favorite ones for Eula, because all you need is a shield, which is one of the best things to run with her anyway, right? You're looking for physical damage, you got Zhongli, good to go. You were looking for Dragon Strike, you want some shields and heals, Dion with some free crit rate from time to time, good to go. Two of the best characters to run with her if you wanna see that video. Haven't checked that one out yet. Check it out, it's on the channel, it came out a couple days ago. But this one right here, there's no window on how well this weapon works. It, as long as you have a shield, this thing is insanely good. It's insanely good, and it's just gonna be standing the test of time here. Now it's beaten out by three weapons here for damage during a certain window. These are all certain window weapons. So we have Skyward Pride R5. If you're hitting two enemies, at least with your Elemental Burst activated, uh, little little wind cutters, right? So if you're hitting two or more enemies with each one, this weapon does substantial AOE, and it's gonna be a very nice AOE chunker weapon. And remember, it's got energy recharge on it, so it might be getting you an extra five to 10% uh, of more damage through having maybe one extra elemental burst in a certain period of time during an abyss floor, right? If it takes you 20 seconds to beat an abyss floor, energy recharge doesn't mean anything, because you just drop your elemental burst and good to go, and you just do it again the next round. So. 
that's something that's going to come down to how strong your team is in whole, how good your artifacts are. But this is what it looks like mathed out with these very, very strong builds across this certain period of time there. Uh, we also have the Broken Pines R5 with the proc here at the end. Very strong stuff uh, with that proc. 24% attack. I think it's 36% attack with the proc up as well. Uh, very, very strong. Doesn't have full uptime though, remember. So during the proc, you're going to be doing a bunch of damage and then once it's gone you're going to be dropping from second place all the way down to third four fifth six seven eighth place without the proc so proc window very strong out proc window still good not the best and then obviously the best one so far in genshin during that proc window nothing comes close during this window is the wolf's gravestone highest by far of course of any weapon here you get 40 percent attack for equipping the weapon 80 percent attack for your whole party specifically also very good for eula when you're hitting something 30 percent hp or below get that proc some of that limit burst or excuse me elemental burst it's gonna feel like a limit burst you're gonna feel like a final fantasy character when you pop that bad boy off and hit someone for about a million damage so that's gonna be in incredibly powerful but look this is why i like the unforged so much because if you're fighting a bunch of enemies that you get down to 30 percent hp right away that's awesome. Maybe you're fighting some hilly trolls and you got one big bad guy. You're fighting one big bad guy though the whole time until you get him to 30% HP, the Wolf's Gravestone R5 is not hitting that proc. And so it goes all the way down here, way below the Unforged by a significant margin, as you can see, sub 800K in this example here, while the Unforged is just kind of chilling and you know, 884K. So on average, right, the Wolf's Gravestone is going to do below it and then it's going to do above it and then it's going to do below it and then it's going to do above it. Meanwhile, the Unforged can just do that average damage all of the time. So it's one of my favorite weapons in Genshin for It's probably the one I'm going to be using. I don't have an R5 Unforged, uh, but if I had like an R5 Serpent Spine, that's a bad one to be using. That's a very nice weapon there uh, for you guys. But hopefully this guy's gave you all of the good information mathematically about what weapons to use for Eula here. Remember, like I said before as well, hopefully I hammered home just how much the importance of that proc window is because, hey, if you proc the proc, and then you start not attacking, you proc, and you start swapping your characters out, you're not really seeing the full benefit of that weapon. So if you're bad at that, maybe think about, maybe you have another weapon to use. Maybe you want another weapon like you've been working on Serpent Spine. It's not conditional. You got a shield, good to go. But hopefully this guy's gave you a good informational lead on what weapons you should be looking for when using Eula as she comes out in Genshin. Remember, we're going to be pulling for her. I'll probably doing a YouTube live stream. Um, check out the Twitch as well. You should be streaming over there, but we want to try it on YouTube this time, see what happens there. And so you guys should get a notification for that. But we usually stream over on Twitch when we do. So go ahead and follow there as well. If you guys did like this video, help my little, help my little saggy, my saggy eyeballs with a like. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, guys.